Hello YouTube, Sidekick here with another installment of the Iron Bomber's Guide to the DCS Galaxy. Uh, in the last episode we talked a little bit about a uh, technique for uh, getting a bit more consistent with our iron bombing when we don't have computer guidance. Uh, so today we're going to refine that a little bit and we're also going to put it into practice. So here's the plan for today. Uh, we're going to review that attack procedure and we're going to talk about something called the Z-diagram. Uh, which gives you the information you need as a pilot to set up your attack run. Um, then we're going to go out to the range and practice it a bit more and take a look at some of the finer points. Uh, and then finally, we're actually going to go and we're going to fly a mission, the old uh, original Haiphong Harbor mission, and we're going to try and put this new technique into practice and see if it gives us uh, good results. So let's go to the whiteboard. Okay, let's take a look at our old friend, the uh, standard dive bombing attack. Uh, let's look at the steps in order. First of all, uh, once we get to the right spot, we're at the right altitude and right speed, we're going to roll in. We're going to roll until our lift vector is pointed at the target. We're going to pull until the flight path vector, in that case this is the top of the sight ladder, is over the target and we're going to roll out. Then we're going to pull the flight path vector up to the aim off point. And we're gonna wait, and we're gonna wait. And when the pipper is over the target, we're gonna know we're at the right altitude and we're gonna release the bombs. Okay, before we go out to the range, uh, let's take a quick look at a tool that the US Navy uses to help pilots prepare for an attack run. Uh, this is called a Z diagram, and it basically contains all of the numbers that you need to set up your attack properly. So. Across the top of the Z, we have the roll-in airspeed and the roll-in altitude. Then as we come down, we have the dive angle that we're going to use. And at the bottom of the Z, we have the sight angle that we're using, the release airspeed and the aim-off distance, and then finally the release altitude. So when you have a Z diagram, you have basically all the parameters you need to plan a successful attack. So let's populate the A4E 30-degree dive angle uh, Z diagram that we've been using. Starting at the top left, we're going to roll in at 325 knots from 10,000 feet at a 30 degree angle. We're going to use a sight depression of 80 mils, and at the release point, we're going to be going 450 knots. Our aim off point is going to be 1,320 feet from the target, and we're going to drop at 3,000 feet. So let's go out to the range and see what that Z diagram looks like in practice. So we're back on the iron bombing test range. Just finished one run. We're working our way back up to altitude. Going to come around and have another go at the Turk. So starting our turn in. Now one of the things about working on the iron bombing range is to develop the habit of flying the same pattern so you can get some consistency. And that's what we're going to talk about in the next video. But for this video, we won't worry about that. We'll just worry about the attack run. Okay, so we're pulling in now, coming up to the uh, initial point. Now we're keeping an eye on our altitude and our airspeed. Going to keep it up around 10,000 feet and up around 300 knots. Pull in a little tighter, a little far out. And right about there for the roll in. Putting the lift vector on the target, we're pulling up, we're rotating out, and when we're lined up, we're pulling up so the top of the sight's on that aim off mark. Gotta get it up a little higher, right about there. Hold, we're a little left, and pickle. And how'd we do? Pretty decent. Okay. Okay, well, so far so good. We're getting pretty consistent results out on the range, but there is still an unresolved issue that we talked about last time, and that's that uh, targets in the real world, world don't always come supplied with a handy aim off mark. So what do you do if you don't know what to aim at? Well, um, we're gonna modify the Z diagram to put that information on there, and it's gonna be in the middle of the Z here, and we're gonna call it um, the checkpoint information. And essentially, the idea is that once you have rolled in and are set up, as you pass through the checkpoint altitude, you'll place a line on the site over the target. And this is the number that is given by the pipper placement. 
So for instance, in the 30 degree dive, the checkpoint altitude would be 5,000 feet and the PIP replacement is 65 mils, which means that as you go through 5,000 feet, you want the 65 mil line over the target. And then that will mean that the flight path vector, which again is at the top of the site, will be on the appropriate aim off mark. So the idea is that if you're properly set up at the checkpoint, you can now look and see what is under the flight path vector at the top of the site and use that as your aim off mark all the way down to the target. Now, I find that it's a pretty hurried process in a 30 degree dive to get all of that straightened out. Um, and that checkpoint altitude is pretty close, close to the release altitude. So um, I think what I'd like to do is uh, come up with a slightly higher uh, and steeper approach so we have a little bit more time to get set up and to practice this. So let's take a look at the Z diagram for a 35 degree approach. Now, these numbers are just determined by trial and error. I went out to the range and, and tried a bunch of runs, and I think these are the right values. We're going to roll in at 12,500 feet at 300 knots, and we're going to dive at 35 degrees. We're going to pass through the checkpoint altitude at 6,000 feet, and our PIP replacement is going to be 50 mils. Our sight angle is going to be 80 mils, so same as last time. And we're going to be going 430 knots at 4,000 feet when we release, and our aim off mark is going to be 1,380, so a little bit beyond what we used the last time. So the other advantage of this uh, Z diagram is, as you can see, we're dropping a thousand feet higher. So this is actually quite a bit better tactically. And since we're going to try this out in a live scenario, the Haiphong Harbor one, um, I thought it was a good idea to maybe have a slightly more tactical approach because honestly, I don't give us a whole lot of chance of surviving the Haiphong Harbor scenario if we're getting down under 3000 feet. Okay, so let's go back up to the range and try some 35 degree dives. Okay, so here we are again. You can tell we're a little bit higher. We're just coming up to our roll-in altitude. Actually, maybe we overshot it a little. Get back down a little as we're rolling in. We're also in a little bit closer. Here's a reminder of what our Z diagram looks like. So we're looking for 12,500 and 300 knots to roll in. So just keep an eye on that out of the corner of our eye. Try not to sag too badly as we're rolling in. Try to keep that speed right around 300. There we are. That's the roll-in picture. Now we're rolling in and lift vector towards the target. Pulling up, pulling up, pulling up. Roll around and get lined up. Wait for that checkpoint altitude to come up so we can check our checkpoint. And there it is. Okay, a little bit under, but not bad. Now we just hold, just hold, just hold, and there we are. How'd we do? Okay, we're a little high, but our aim off mark was a little low. So let's see how we do. Not bad at all. Okay, so let's take another run out of here. We are coming up to altitude, getting ready to turn in. So the last run does show something interesting that this method uh, provides, I think, and that is that there's a little bit of self-correction going on. When you use the aim off mark, I find that if you dive a little bit too steeply, then you drop a little bit high. If you dive too shallow, then you drop a little bit low. And of course, those two things cancel out. Uh, and so it actually means that if you're really careful with the aim off mark, um, you can be pretty consistent even if your dive angle is not exactly right. Okay, there we're looking at the altitude and the speed, getting ready to roll in. Just want to get ourselves lined up. A little bit, the speed's a little bit low. So we'll just keep a little bit more power on in the dive. There we go, rolling in lift vector to target, pulling up, rolling out, rolling out, looking for the aim off mark, pulling up, pulling up to the aim off, getting ready to check the checkpoint right around there. 
good that time. And here we go. Release. Let's see how we did. Another pretty good run. Now, one thing I found, uh, some literature online that said the effective radius of a Mark 82 bomb is about 30 meters in the forward direction. So I consider anything within 30 meters to be a pretty good hit. Okay, enough flying around in circles. Let's go fly a real mission. In this case, we're going to fly the Haiphong Harbor mission, which was actually uh, one of the first videos that I made on the channel. Maybe you've tried it. If you haven't, you should go check out the video and check out the mission file on the ED user file site. So while we're flying down the valley here, getting uh, ready to ingress, let's uh, just go back a bit and take a look at what we're uh, doing here today. Here's the briefing. Basically, our target is this uh, oil facility uh, right here, and we're going to come at it from the east and egress to the west out to sea. Now, there's one more thing that I want to do before we go back. Let's just take a look at the exactly where our aim off mark should be. It's 1,380 feet. So really just about opposite the middle of the next pier over is about where aim off mark should be. And that's gonna be useful data as we uh, fly the mission. So here we go. We're just uh, following the valley here because there is a SAM site up at the harbor and we need to stay down out of SAM range until we're ready to pop up over the ridge and ingress. So we'll stay down here, staying with the rest of our flight here, trying to keep them in view and also trying to avoid jinking into them as we jink back and forth down the valley here. Now we are jinking because there is a little bit of AAA down the floor of the valley and if you are particularly unlucky or if you fly straight and level for too long, uh, you may find that you don't even get to the harbor to drop the bombs. So not going really hard at it, but we are continuing to roll back and forth just to keep our, uh, our flight path changing so that uh, those AAA guys don't have a chance to line us up. All right, we're coming down here over the last little ridge before we're into the final part of the valley. Got to get the radar warning receiver on. You can hear that we haven't got anything on there yet. So we're low enough that we're not tripping the search radar. Also get our countermeasures turned on because we're going to want to deploy those if we hear the radar. Okay, a couple more jinks back and forth and we're gonna be ready to go up. So we're gonna try and use the 35 degree uh, attack. Now we're probably not gonna get all the way up to 12,500 feet uh, because uh, we just won't have the speed to carry us up that high in the time we have to pop up. So our ingress is probably gonna be a little bit lower. Um, so we'll just have to be a little closer to the target to try and get that 35 degree angle. But um, the aim off mark and all the rest of the stuff should be about the same. Okay, I think this is our last jink here. I'm gonna pull around. We ingress at 270. So as soon as we come to west, we're rolling out and pulling up. Okay, up we go. And we're gonna hear the radar here in a minute. Okay, there's the target. Yeah, still good, haven't heard the radar yet. Ah, there he is. Okay, rolling over, picking up the target. We're aimed a little close, let's offset a little bit to the right. Pull around a little to the right, roll back over, take a look over the side here. And... Yeah, okay, still got a little ways to go. Close up a little bit. Eh, we're not bad. We're up over 10,000 feet, so that's not bad. We're just watching that. Okay, rolling in. 
lift vector to target. And roll out with the flight path vector on the target. Pull the flight path vector up to the aim off the mark, which is middle of that, and get ready and pickle. And now we got a jink like heck to get away from this AAA. And there's the result. Pretty hard to beat that for this bombing run, to tell the honest truth. Not sure I've ever put the bombs on the target quite as uh, proficiently as that before. Okay, got a tracking tone, so we're deploying flares, or chaff, although we're deploying flares at the same time, we just haven't programmed it the same. And keep chinking, and our savior's going to be that headland because we're going to pull around that. We're going to lose the radar once we're on the other side. Yep, we even got a launch. That's exciting. Well, we're going to lose them. There we go. No need to worry about him anymore. Now we just need to get back to the boat. But we're going to want to stay nice and low. Even over the water. That Sam is up on the hill, so he'll be able to track us down pretty low. Maybe even lower than usual can hear the search tone again. Okay, I think we're safe now, so let's just take stock of where we are. Uh, I think it's fair to say that that uh, iron bombing method works pretty well. Works pretty well on the range. Uh, worked pretty well on this mission for sure. Make sure you subscribe to the channel if you want to see the next installment where we talk about doing a proper range practice pattern. And for now, this is going to be Sidekick, signing off.